Okay? Good. Um, so we want to discuss one loop amplitudes in today's class. Um, uh, so we completed, uh, we, we discussed this, uh, the major issue for closed strings of Um Let me quickly tell you about the similar definition for, for open strings. Okay? So suppose we want to do a one loop amplitude for an open string. That's this little string here that runs around in a loop. Okay? So the uh, uh, the kind of surface we have is uh, is a cylinder. And this side is identified as this. It's a little cylinder. The string is very little. Okay? Now, uh, we could ask how many moduli does a cylinder have? Okay? This is the same as the number of zero modes of the B operator that respect the boundary conditions of the cylinder. So what are the boundary conditions of the cylinder? The boundary conditions of the cylinder are paid up in this direction and at the edges, the boundary conditions we discussed before, namely that B is equal to B. Okay? Now, uh, on the torus, we had two zero modes for the uh, for B and B cylinder, namely constant B and constant B. Okay? Uh, we're going to have the same kinds of zero modes here. This can be thought of as part of a torus, but the doubling trick becomes it becomes a torus. Okay? Uh, so we're going to have the same zero modes, except that B and B cylinder are not independent zero modes, because B is equal to B cylinder. They have the boundaries. Okay? Yeah, the boundaries must be lower than the No. Well, I mean, it's still either way, it doesn't matter. But the, the, I'm thinking of this little string going around this string. Okay, so these are the endpoints. Of course, that's symmetric, right? You could think of it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. But that's not the way I think. Okay, so I'm thinking of this is sigma. Okay, uh, fine. So there's, there's one modulus in this situation. One, what's that one modulus? That one modulus is really clear. It's the height of this. So suppose we always choose this to be 0 and pi, the sigma direction. This direction is, uh, let's say, tau. What? Um, we probably want to call it t times 2 pi, which is consistent with our notation for the closed string. And the modulus is simply the value of t. Okay? So that's the unique modulus of the game. Uh, what does the angle matter? Yeah. You see, we want the, the angle is fixed by boundary. You see, the boundary conditions we're putting are at the edges del sigma uh, of, of x is equal to zero. If you change the angle, then you'll have to put different boundary conditions. Okay? So this this with del sigma x equals zero. Okay, you, you, you can't change the angle. And if you change the angle, you change the boundary condition. So that's not a symmetric. Okay? Uh, good. So, uh, so the modulus here is this t. Okay. Now, once again, we want to calculate the measure of moduli space. So it's the same calculation we had before. You know, uh, as we've seen last time, del g. ZZ, if you remember, del GZZ divided by del uh, tau bar, I think it was, was equal to, was proportional to 1 by mean tau. And del GZ bar Z bar by del tau was, equal, was proportional to 1 by mean. This is what we saw last time for the torus. Okay? Now what are we doing here? What are we doing here is Basically the same as a special case of the rectangular torus. Okay? So in, in this particular case, uh, we do more or less the same calculation, except we, we focus it at tau equals i time imaginary part of ta, uh, tau is equal to i t. Okay? And because the torus is rectangular, you know, so because our metric always takes the form ds squared is equal to d sigma 1 squared plus tau squared times d sigma 2 squared. Uh, you know, what happens, all we're, basically all we're changing 
is gy1. When we change t, the infinite tensor changes in gyy, and gyy has equal components of gzz and gz bar z bar. Okay. 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 Is this clear? Okay, it doesn't look clear, let me work with that. Okay, so the question we're asking is, suppose we had the w, the z coordinate, and we have dz, dz bar is equal to, uh, so that the metric is equal to ds squared, dz, dz bar, where sigma is equal to, uh, belongs to the range uh, 0 to 5, and tau belongs to, as, as a periodic coordinate, in uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Now we're going to be drawing a new web. Suppose. Now, uh, suppose we take T2. So this, this is a general set. Now we work with a variable W such that ds squared is equal to dw, dw bar. Okay? Uh, and these ranges for sigma is the same as above, but tau belongs to uh, 0 to 2 pi, t plus n. Okay. We're now going to take this metric and reword it in terms of the metric, uh, in terms of the variable z, where the periodicities of z, wait, let's, I'm sorry, to be consistent with the notation we used last time, we call this z, z bar, just forget okay. that slide. Okay, where, where the, we reword in terms of the variable w, where the periodicities of w were that of uh, uh, 0 to tau, 0 to 2 by t. Without the data. Okay? So, what's the change that we have to do? The, the change that we have to do is uh, 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 real z is equal to real part of w. So, the imaginary part of z okay, is equal to the imaginary part of uh, uh, w. Uh, rescaled. Right? So the imaginary part of Z, so the Z variable goes to uh, uh, T plus delta T, so T plus delta T. Okay? So we take this metric, this, these, these definitions of the variables here, and find the metric in terms of uh, W and W bar. Is this clear? Okay, so, uh, shall I work it out? Okay, it, it, it's the same exercise we did last time. Uh, okay, that's right. So, if we, if we want to work it out, we will get D R E W the whole thing squared, because that hasn't changed. Plus t plus two delta t. Okay, so just one plus uh, two delta t by t for the first order. D in w. Okay. Is that clear? It's absolutely. So the change in the metric is what? It's so delta g is. We have delta G imaginary imaginary is equal to delta T divided by T. That's it, right? But now we can translate that into GZZ and GZ bar Z bar. But GZZ, you know, some linear combination of the real and the imaginary part. There's no change in the real part. So the change in both GZZ and the change in that that part are proportional to.
plus B bar times L G Z Z by D. Okay? Now, in this insertion, only the zero mode matches. On the zero mode, B is equal to B bar. And each of them, uh, each of uh, and this whole thing, and, and they're both constants, B is equal to B bar, they're both constants. So this whole thing can be written as the volume of this thing times, okay, so, so what? So it's D to Z times B of 0 times 1 by right? After factors of 2 be Is this clear? But this D to Z is pi into T. It is out. Some pi is into T. So this thing is proportional to B of 0 without any factors of T. The volume of the strip. Okay, so the B insertions have just B of 0 with no factor of T. That was the same as in the Taurus view, if you trace that. Uh, no, okay, well, uh, two copies of it. Should be a little careful, but no. Uh, anyway. However, uh, what about the C insertions? We play the same game with the C insertions that we did last time. Okay, we have just one unfixed uh, conformal giving vector. It's the same thing that we set for Bs, because there's there was a C and a C till now, it's both constants, but now C is equal to C till now, so one of the conditions. Okay? The one unfixed step, the formula the vector, is uh, uh, translations along this direction. Okay? And uh, 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 we could, uh, uh, fixing that one unfixed conformal killing vector, fixing the one unfixed conformal killing vector is like, uh, 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 choosing one boundary operator to be fixed. But we can, because the insertion point of that C doesn't matter, because C is a constant, zero mode of C is a constant, we can separate where we fix, where we put that C, and where we put the integration vertex operator. And then integrate over the vertex operator up to a division by the volume. Okay? So, the net result is that instead of having the fixed vertex operator, we can have all vertex operators integrated, but with, the, with an insertion of C0 divided by volume, and the volume is C. Okay? So the final conclusion is that uh, uh, we have dt divided by t, Expectation value of B0, C0, times whatever, or times the integration vertex.
So uh, you remember, uh, this is the answer for the open strings, and the answer for the closed strings was the to tau by u tau, and b0, b bar 0, c0, c bar. This is closed. It is kind of, again, interpreting. Okay, so now let's move on. Um, uh, what we're going to do now in the rest of this class is to actually evaluate the closed strip partition function and the open strip partition function for the simple theory we can study. Okay, and then interpret these objects. Okay, uh, the, 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 the these calculations will show, show us some of the uh, basic properties of string theory uh, at loop order, uh, then I sort of call it anymore. Okay, so we've done this closed string thing before, but just quickly to remind you of our point and to remind you of the interpretation. Okay, so what do we have to put in here? We have to put in the partition function of the BC system. We have the partition function of the X conformal field theory, and that's it. So now let's let's write out the partition function of the uh, of the uh, x conformal field theory. The published function of the x conformal field theory was what? Um, it was 1 by u tau to the power 26 by 2. Oh, so let me just write it, the whole to the power of 26. Okay? Then we had um, 1 over uh, u to the power minus minus 24 uh, minus 1 by 24 uh, 1 minus u to the power n product of n of uh, 1 over Q bar to the power minus 1 by 24, uh, product over n, 1 minus Q bar to the power n, where Q is equal to e to the power 2 pi. Okay, that's Well, 
it's a somewhat obsolete Yeah, the, the, the Babylonian interpretation of function function on the torus is that of a trace over the spectrum of the conformity. Is this clear? Is this clear? Does everyone know this? We discussed this last night and this is basic quantity theory you should know. But somebody explain this to me. You know, how you how in positive language do you compute, compute the trace over e, that, a trace e to the power minus beta h? You do you feel the path integral on what manner? Uh, a space cross a circle and the size of the circle is beta. Okay? Is this clear? This is familiar. Okay? Good. So now, uh, suppose we have a rectangular torus. Suppose we have a rectangular torus. Okay? Um, then, what would the, that the bottom integral, so this is 0 to 2 pi, this is 0 to 2 pi tau. Okay? What would the interpretation, the trace interpretation of this, uh, of this, this path integral? Right. So let's say that we take the, the system is going to be living on a circle of size 2 pi. So it would be trace of e to the power minus 2 pi b times h. Okay. Now we will make this, this torus q. Now we have a suggestion for a uh, for a uh, uh, path integral for a Hamiltonian integration. So let's call this the integral. Exactly. 
Exactly. So the oscillators. What, what is the spectrum of our system? The LCO spectrum is a spectrum of oscillators of frequency 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each oscillator, an oscillator of frequency m as partition function, 1 over 1 minus e to the power m. Yes, the occupation number of that. So we've got all of these oscillators and we have to take the product. Is this clear? Okay? The Q bar of course is the same thing. Now what is this Q to the power minus 1? Yeah. 
up, that simultaneously write down the matter partition function for the open space. Okay, let's, let's finish the close break and get back. Okay, good. Now what about the ghost partition? Okay. Now something we can say about this partition function immediately. Okay? Something that we can say immediately about this, this partition function is that it is modular invariant. Okay? That is Z, for instance, it implies that Z of tau is equal to Z of minus one. Or more generally, it's invariant as a full modular group. Okay, we discussed this modular group, this SL to Z modular group, uh, last semester. I won't describe it again. But uh, uh, why is that? Okay, that is because this is a conformal field theory. Okay, so the, so the partition function is invariant at the scale. Now, a torus of, of modular parameter tau is equal geometrically to the torus modular, modular parameter minus 1 by tau up to an overall, overall scale. And the partition function is just invariant on that scale. As we discussed great length last last semester. Okay? So why it's not obvious algebraically, we get we get a very interesting property in this function. Okay? So this function that's defined by this in tau to power half, uh, the product of Q's and this product of Q bars, okay, is uh, 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 invariant under tau goes to minus one. Okay, this is something we use when analyzing the open string spectrum uh, in the little bit, so I just want to remind you of that. Okay, fine. Um, uh, now, now let's, re let's return to the uh, let's return to this ghost business. Okay? So what is partition function of the ghost? Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to once again write down the answer. And I'll ask you to help me and figure it out. It's q to the minus 1, q bar to the power minus 1, q q bar to the power minus, what is it, the 26 by 24. And then product of n is equal to 1 to infinity, 1 minus q to the power n squared, 1 minus q to the power n. I'm claiming that this partition function was a b, b bar c, c bar insertion. Uh, the first part. Okay, help me pick it. Where do each of these terms come from? So firstly, where are these? Okay, so this come from? So once I once again this q to the power n is zero, so the spectrum of n is zero. So what? Where do we get this from? What are the modes of the C and B and C ghosts? Both B and C's were anti-commutators. 
the occupation number in each oscillator is either 0 or 1. There's an extra minus sign because what are we computing? We are computing the partition function with periodic boundary conditions for BNC. Again, why are we computing with periodic boundary conditions? Because they were ghosts for diffeomorphisms which have periodic boundary conditions. Or the module which have periodic Again, but the Hamiltonian interpretation of the of the path integral with periodic boundary conditions for a field that is anti-commuting is traced with an extra factor of minus one to the x. Okay? So what we're computing is not trace e to the power minus beta h. We're computing trace of e to the power minus one minus trace of minus one to the x times e to the power minus beta h. Okay? So this is the vacuum. No oscillator excited. This is the state with one oscillator excited. Since it has opposite Fermi on number from this guy, it has one extra one extra anti-commuting field excited, it computes to the minus. It's a numerator which says that there are only two possible states. Occupation number zero, occupation number eight. Uh, uh, occupation number one. Is this fair? Okay? It's square because I, whatever we have to see, we also have to be. Okay. Now, in the zero mode sector, had we not had these extra insertions of B, B, B bar, C, C bar, we would have got zero. Because the zero mode sector has this two state system with opposite Fermion number and the same energy. So the trace with minus one to the F to the minus But these insertions help us pick out these. There's, there's one zero mode, there's one two state system for left movers, one two, three, two state system for the right movers. So the four fold degeneracy in zero mode sector. These insertions help us become exactly one of those four states. Okay? And we don't get zero, there are no more cancellation. It's the state where we, which are obviously zero on the zero, the physical state. We discussed this last time. It involves knowing the right scalar product in the same. I won't get it wrong. But, okay, so fine. So we have this. Now, what about these extra factors? What about this q q bar to the power minus 26 by 8? Which is plus 26. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, 
So this is Z cos. Now tell me what this what this factor is. It's the same as this factor. Let's just explain that statement. Because if the is no other, no, okay, there is no zero point here. Right, right. Every conformal field theory has Casimir energy. You see, the vacuum, the identity operator, has dimensions here. So that naively translates into the vacuum having energy zero. That statement is naive because it doesn't account for the conformal element. As we discussed last week. And the correct version of that statement is that the energy of the state corresponding to the identity operator is minus C by 24. In this case, C was 1, so that's minus 1 by 24. L0 was 1. Minus 1 by 24, L0 power was minus 1. Minus C by 24, L0 power was minus 1. Everything is to the power of six. Okay. What is the what is the uh, uh, central charge of the VC system? It is minus twenty six. You know that because that's that's how we got the critical dimension, right? The full conformity theory we had to have central charge zero. Matter at charge central charge 26, BC system at central charge minus 26. Okay, so this is the energy of the state corresponding to the identity operator minus C by 24, C is minus 26, minus 10, so plus 26. Is this clear? Finally, what is this? The what? The zero. Okay, it's, yeah, so sort of the zero one bit stuff. You know, this is not a mirror field, it doesn't have a usual sort of uh, zero one. What is the difference in the state between the vacuum and the state corresponding to the identity of the Do you remember that the state corresponding to the identity of the was not the same as the vacuum of the theory? The vacuum of the theory, in fact, had was C was the state corresponding to the operator C. Okay? And since C has dimension minus 1, the vacuum has energy minus 1 compared to the state corresponding to the energy. That's this. All these oscillators are counted about the vacuum. We should be writing that together, the energy of the vacuum. And we've done that today. Minus 1? Minus C divided by the negative. That's the energy of the vacuum. Is this clear? Okay? Yeah, okay. We, we've gone slower than I hope today. But uh, anyway. Um, okay. okay. So. Uh, so now let's put all this together. We have to multiply this guy with this guy. Okay. So these oscillator factors of the 26, two of them go away. Okay? What about these uh, these these other factors? You see, uh, this and this can't. But this remains. And this is exactly enough to be a Q to the power plus 1 by 24 in the denominator for each of these factors. Okay? So let me write down what remains. What remains is 1 by e now times 1 by Q to the power 1 by 24 product over n 1 minus Q to the power n uh, product of Q, Q, Q bar, say, product of, okay, 1 minus Q bar to the power n times square root of in tau 
That's what we just about him for. Exactly. This is a partition function and of this this very for us. In the light of you better get a zero motor, you need in all kinds of extensions. Apart from in tau factors, this is what we were going to pick. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, but if you actually get this extra in tau, it's exactly what you're going to pick. Okay. And then we combine this together with the measure of a moduli space we have in the torus. That was d2 tau over in tau. So that becomes d2 tau over in tau plus x squared times whatever that's in the bracket. Okay, so this calculation is 
correct, just for scalar particles. But it's true actually about one over every other particle if you multiply by effective number of degrees of freedom. The statement I'm making now. Okay, now this, uh, this effective vacuum energy graph okay, can be related in a sort of prettier way that helps us make contact with what the atmosphere is. Okay, and that, that way is to uh, rewrite this in the following way. To rewrite this as a, a dt by t times exponential of minus t, and for fun you put it two years, at the level at which we are working in our factors at this point. dt by t, exponential of minus t by t is Okay, why is this true? Well, you see that uh, uh, suppose you didn't have this t here, then this answer would be proportional to uh, 1 over square root of a squared plus x squared. Okay? Uh, times uh, uh, Oh, sorry, no, no square. One over one case better six. Okay? Now integrate both sides. With respect to case better six. Okay? And that gives you one over t here. Okay? And uh, uh, there's another way of saying it. Actually, the statement is a bit, not, bit, not, bit, bit careless because this, this integral is not really well defined. You have to define it with respect to uh, some cutoff. But if you put some cutoff here, lower cutoff epsilon, uh, another way of saying it is the following. Uh, uh, another way of saying it would be uh, yeah, so, you know, another way of saying it is that if, you know, if you, if you look at the uh, if formally this this object is independent of k squared by x k squared plus x squared by change of variable. And you can define the p prime, which is p times k squared plus m squared. This measure is invariant. Formally, this answer does not depend on k squared. Okay. But uh, the reason that it actually does is that there's a cutoff here. There's a divergence at small t. You have to cut that cutoff. You have that cutoff state to be very small. The dependence on the cutoff is fairly logarithmic. And when you make this change of variables, you change that cutoff by uh, by uh, uh, by this factor of k squared plus m squared, and that's the origin. So that's the second way to say the same thing. You know, uh, you get another way it would be that without this t, the fact that this is 1 over k squared by plus m squared is dimensional analysis. And the same dimensional analysis that makes it a log with it. This is all equivalent to this. Okay? Uh, now, this is very useful represent. It's, it's a little careless. There's something you have to deal with start off and so on and some subtraction. But let's, let's just hold it. Just forget about all those things which we can deal with. Okay? So now, um, this is a useful representation and it has an interesting interpretation. Suppose we were interested, we were interested in looking at the theory in first quantized language. Okay? Then, this is the sum over all particle parts. T is the modulus of that surface, the length of that part. dt by t is the sort of measure that we would have calculated by the analog of all the processes that we've been dealing with for strength theory. And this is simply the fact that you can, you're computing the trace of uh, the Hamiltonian weighted with the effective temperature of this quantum mechanical system, the effective temperature T. Okay? So from the point of view, first you have a quantized language, this is very natural. Okay? And that makes it, it makes it clear that this is the right expression to use in comparing with the string theory, with a string theory calculation. Because uh, uh, yeah, again, okay, next here that's the right expression to use by comparing with the theory calculation because, uh, uh, well, well, because, uh, because it's strict theory, we're working effectively in first quantized language. Okay, fine. So now, now let's, let's, so what would we expect from this point of view, the vacuum energy of the, of our string theory, uh, to give us? What we will expect is that we will have dt by dt. Exponential of minus d by 2 into k squared plus m i squared with some i over all the particles straight. Okay? 
We should sum up the particles weighted by vector degrees for you. So Bennett is saying we should sum over all the states of the physical states of the deformity. Each of those gives you some polarization of the right Okay? Then it deals with the objection. Okay? Now why, why, how do you relate mi squared to something in world sheet deformity? Well, remember our Marshall formula. Our Marshall formula was that alpha prime m squared by 4 was equal to L0 minus 1. But that was also equal to L0 bar minus 1. So we can write this as alpha prime m squared by 2 is equal to L0 minus 1 plus L0 bar minus 1. Where L0 now is pure oxidator. We've taken out 0 from energy. Divide by 2. Oh, sorry, we'll have to remove the two. And twice alpha prime n squared by 4 is equal to this. Okay? So, you see that the. Now, to every oscillator state of L0, there corresponds a particle in state theory. The mass given by this formula. But the corresponds particle only to the arbitrary oscillators on the left and on the right, but subject to the level matching relation. L0 is equal to L0. Okay? So, if we want to do the sum over all particles in string theory, weighted by their mass, it's a very clever way to do it. You, the first thing we'll do is to uh, uh, replace uh, P by a tau variable. So, P we call alpha prime. Tau. So that is another alpha prime. Okay? So we get integral d tau by tau, that hasn't changed. Then exponential of minus tau alpha prime k squared by 2. That will take out. So. Okay? 
you see that uh, uh, this gives us q to the power l0, q bar to the power l0 bar. Okay, we have uh, q q bar bar to the power minus 1. What is the minus 1 is that? And uh, uh, we also have, I mean, we could try to say 0 minus 1, we might say 0 bar minus 1. Okay, and then we can do the integral over k and get our in tau, it was t, but t was in tau to the power 1. 13 by 12. Okay? So, this thing is just d2 theta, uh, d2 tau, d real tau that we have. No? Okay? This was imaginary part of tau, so we recover exactly what we had before. Exactly what we had before. Like we can recover exactly what we had before, except for one, one important change. We have d2 tau and u tau. Uh, now, this u tau, uh, sorry, this is u tau to the power 13. So, this is square, and then we put 12 in there. So, 1 by square root u tau times u to the 1 by 24, u bar to 1 by 24, and this is prop. All is pretty cool. Right? This is over 24 because we were doing this light code gauge. So in light code gauge, we the right physical spectrum and then we uh, have to impose left magic. Okay? So we get exactly the same expression that we had before, except for one change. Can you ever tell me what that one change is?
in the integration according to the rules of string theory. Now, you are thinking, this is a bit of a fail, because I happen to choose this particular modular, modular domain. I could have chosen this domain. In that case, we would have had a small image and a potential divergence. But, you see, all domains are the same, so let's, let's try to stop what they say. What is this point under the modular transformation? The modular transformation that takes us from here to here is calculus one way, you know? So this point of maps to infinity. Okay? So, what you are saying is, well, you are not worrying about the problem here, that's thrown away, but wherever you had, there's a reflection of that same problem once you go up there. So what about the problem at large? Now remember, the problem at large, at large t, the only values of k that contribute are very small values of k. So this is one of the great things about string theory. You see, if you have a problem at large t, it means that there must have been in field theory language a problem at very small values. Or restated, if there was no problem at very small values of k, as long distance is there, there cannot be a problem at large t. So now what I say is that string theory links good IR behavior to good UV, UV behavior. Let's see this in more detail. Oh, we have to run this screen. Yeah. Let me just one minute. Just let's see this in more detail. Uh, you see, uh, let's look at this partition function. Let's look at this partition function at very large values of t. Okay? At very large values of t, only the ground state contributes. The ground state in this pro particular problem had negative energy. Okay? So, so what I'm saying is that you take this partition function and expand it in a power series expansion. I mean, the power series is an equal power minus t. Okay? And you get an equal power 2t, that's the ground state, plus 1, that's the zero mass, the, 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 the contribution of uh, uh, massless particles, plus exponentially suppressed. And we have to do the integral d2, so let's forget about the theta the t direction, so dt over t squared, and if you remember we have t to the power uh, 30. Yeah, that's okay, it's just t to the 20, to the t So dt over t, then t to the power. Now this guy here is just wrong. It blows up exponentially at last. So we, you know, in the bosonic string, the one-loop partition function, function, function for the first string, is divergent. That's true. But why is it divergent? It's divergent in large t, which means it's divergent in small t. What was called the divergence? This is a tachyon. You see, it's coming from the ground state of the string, which was a tachyon. It, basically, if you've got a state of negative energy, effectively on the string, okay, that's going to give you a divergence. Okay? Now, why is field theory in terms of that divergence of the tachyon? It's because you're trying to do a uh, path integral of path integral of e to the power plus m squared phi squared minus k squared phi squared. So if k is smaller than m, these modes, these suppression, these modes, the, the amplitude for the modes at k smaller than m want to grow rather than you know, the, the path type is maximized by these amplitude modes being very large rather than being very small. And that gives you the divergence. That's the divergence we see. We see the fact that if you take any negative mass particle and try to do a perturbation theory, okay, you get a divergent contribution to everything. And this is an infrared divergence. It comes from k smaller than It's an infrared divergence. So we are close to theory does have this infrared divergence. Because it has a vacuum, that we knew. However, in the absence of the tachyon, suppose we managed to make a string here where there was no negative mass state in the conformal basis, no tachyon, then this onwards is finite. 
This is an algebraic function. This is fine. Yeah, this is an exponential. Okay. Now, when we deal with the superstring in about a month, we will construct a string theory which has no value. So we won't have to make this apology about the infrared wave. The ultraviolet thing, you can always view the part of the angle in the way so that the ultraviolet region is just not there. Okay? All possible problems are infrared. And if we know that the theory is well behaved in the infrared, then it is all an automatic guarantee that we'll have no divergence problems in our, in our one group. Okay? So, so once again, just look at the, connect, the connection between string theory and theory. String theory for this particular question of calculating the vacuum energy does something very smart. It cuts off effectively high momentum regions. Now, you see, there's one last thing I want to say before we go to the closure, and that, that's this. You might think that, well, that's sort of um, that's sort of easy. We just put some cutoff in momentum space. Somehow, that's what string theory seems effectively to be. You know, it's quite, we could just do that by hand, and any old cutoff will do, and we get some sensible results. I want to emphasize that that's not true. That's not true because, you know, one thing that we, I want to emphasize is that under tau goes to 1 by tau, uh, you see, these points are invariant under tau goes to 1 by tau. This is the boundary of what's linked by tau. And in particular, a point here is, in, is mapped to the point here. So let's look at the topology of this space. This thing looks like a strip with boundaries. But actually, this edge, this thing, is the same as this thing. So it's a cylinder. And this part is the same as this part. So you see, it's like a cylinder whose edges have been stuck. Okay? And infinity, every point and infinity should be thought of as the same point. You know, when it's going to be used. So what this is, is like a sphere. The topology is like that of a sphere. This fundamental domain here is a compact manifold. That's very important because you may remember from last semester that all our our our, our no ghost theorems, the fact that you know BRST equivalent amplitudes, uh, BRST equivalent operators gave us the same amplitudes, okay, relied on there being no total derivatives in modular space. You know, BRST equivalent operators gave us equal amplitudes up to total derivatives in modular space. If the boundary is to modular space, it's totally there. It's not well complicated. If BRST equivalent objects give you different amplitudes, you have negative norm states in your theory, and your theory breaks you down. Okay? And this is the problem that has plagued every previous attempt to quantize it. You try to put a cutoff by hand, it's very hard to do that in a way that does not break with your bubble and invariance, and therefore in, uh, introduces negative norm states in your theory. Okay? String theory has a very clever way of putting this cut off in a way that preserves unit hand. If you violated this in any way, if you chose to integrate over some other part of the fundamental domain, you will introduce negative norm states in your theory and the theory will make sense. It's a very particular way of cutting off the theory that manages to make sense. And this is a very important point. Okay, I hope to discuss the open string also, but clearly we're not doing that today.